Yo guys, Wags here. Today we're building a custom GPT for video scripting. So this is a process I've been doing separately on GPT 4.0 for the last year, and it's been working fantastic. And it's a great way of expanding and changing how you do your video scripting or idea generation or even social media posts. So in some cases, it's worth doing the processes separately, but now with custom GPTs, it almost doesn't make any sense not to use a custom GPT. So that's what we're building here. So when you create your first or a custom GPT, it usually tells you, hey, what do you want to build? So we're telling it, I would like you to have, like you to be an expert video script writer. We're going to start with feeding you some script videos from my competitors, then some of my video scripts. Then we're going to outline topics and ideas we'll work through to create a, you know, a process for the content creation process based on that outline. We may also leverage BARD for a version of the output. So I may also ask you to generate prompts to help BARD output another version of the content. So basically I'm telling it to do one of two things. Let's absorb all this content from this competitor so that we analyze the length of their videos, their scripting, how much content they're trying to get across because I find that's the first problem. If you don't know, you usually talk too much and that's where it becomes more difficult than it needs to be for you. And so you really don't want to do that. You want to know exactly what that perfect amount of content information you should get across to folks. So what I would do is find your competitors, find people that you like the content that they're generating and identify those IG reels, TikTok videos, YouTube shorts or YouTube videos and pull a transcript from those. So this is a fairly simple process um, for pulling transcription. I'm going to actually show you guys a couple of options that are really simple and easy to do. One is uh, basically we'll start by taking the video itself, which I think is more important. You can screen record right on your iPhone. It's built into most of the new iPhones as a screen record function. If you don't have an iPhone, you may have to use, you know, an app to screen record and the voice itself. That's the fastest way to download content you like. Now, if you're on YouTube, you're lucky because in most cases, most YouTube's uh, YouTube channels have transcription built in. And so you can actually get the whole transcript from most YouTube shorts and YouTube videos that's built in. But anything on IG or TikTok, you're going to have to download that video. Screen recording is the fastest way. Once you have that, we're going to take it to a program like Otter. Um, it allows you to upload MP3s, MP4s, everything you can video audio wise, and it'll do the transcribing for you. That's something I used to use a lot, but it's time consuming and you have to wait. And so I actually went forward with Adobe Premiere and they have transcription built in. So you can go right into Premiere, load up any video, export just the text file of the transcription. And that's basically what I do now. So once you have that transcription information, you end up being in a position where you can then go to GPT and tell it a little bit more. So we've done that. Next, it asks me, let's confirm the name for your GPT. Decided to be funny and call it Video Scripty McWiz. Um, so let's go forward. I'm going to give it a bunch of transcriptions that we just did. There's four. Now, I love, I love seeing these kinds of errors in GPT. These things are going to happen. It's maybe sometimes because of the number of files that get uploaded or an error with that file specifically. So I'm just going to go ahead, add one at a time. Hopefully that won't be an error there. Here is a video script one for a competitor. Please ingest this to your knowledge base. I will add three more scripts after this one. There we go. Now we're going to let GPT chew on that for a second. Basically, this is the best way of it ingesting what it sees to be a style. So it'll look at the tone manner, the length of the scripts, the type of words being used, and can generate some sort of a 
basically a tone and manner prompt that allows you to say, here's the kind of concise uh, timing you're looking for. You're really looking to say only six major statements. They each need to be between this long. That framework helps you then take either your scripting ideas and allow GPT to better build you what you're looking for. Uh, one of the tests that I've been doing um, that's been interesting is I'll put a script together myself and then afterwards I'll ask GPT to generate um, a version of it in Mr. Beast's tone and manner style and then something like maybe a Gary Vaynerchuk just to see what kind of different way of speaking focus is possible. So just so that you kind of understand <laughs> what you think and what you might be doing doesn't have to be the only way to do it and may not be the best way of how to connect with people in your audience. Here's the next video script to add to your knowledge base. So that's a big one, learning to kind of go outside your own scripting ideas and what you're really thinking about, because the reality is what you think and what you believe in your scripting is sometimes very limiting and putting yourself to kind of go and play outside of that box is really important before you get comfortable enough to kind of develop or create your own style. I think it actually comes from at the beginning copying and trying different styles that are out there to see what really does work for you. There we go. So it looks to be accepting these. Just going to be lazy and copy and paste my request right back into GPT. There we go. Script number three. Now GPT can work fast and slow. So on any of these parts, we'll just fast forward. But on the most part, this is the working side. This is the preview of the script itself. And then I can share this with people and say, great, you want to upgrade your scripting to do something similar to what I do. Here's how you can do that. Just run it through here and create some of those prompts. Okay. We're going to ask the last video here. Number four. Okay. I'm going to jump back to here. I'm going to grab one of my videos and export that as wags.transcript. That way we have that. That way you can give GPT all the examples of what you want. Now it understands. So it's going to ask me a few things here. I'm going to do this based on the four example video scripts provided. Please generate the tone and manner prompt. I can use to recreate my video scripts in a similar and stop. Now this is important because against this is where a lot of people lose the value of GPT because they give it very vague information and very little of that information is narrowed down to your audience, your target, and who's speaking and from what experience level. In this case, by creating a tone and manner type prompt, it allows me to take that to any other further GPT and stay within this style. So I like to ask it to create those types of prompts for me because then it gives me exactly kind of what I'm looking for. So in this case, so given the tone and manner style provided in the competitor prompt, how can we craft a video? So it created a prompt for itself. I appreciate that. So you know what? We're going to take that because I like when GPT does a little bit of work. First, we're going to save what we have been doing. Once it's saved, we're going to go to scripty mix script. I like actually being in this editing mode because I can jump between the two. talking about.
So here we go. It's kind of giving what it sees as the formula from the scripts provided from your competitor. Another thing that we work on that works incredibly well is if you have a lot of content on a platform like Twitter or X at this point, you may want to use something like a thread downloader that downloads all your content from Twitter. And then what we do is feed all of your tweets, all of your posts into GPT and allow it to create what your tone and manner should be. And it takes all of that content as context. So that's a very powerful way of using content you've already written. If you have obviously pages of content, books, blog posts, we can feed all of that into ChatGPT to get your tone and manner. So here you go. So basically we can tell GPT what to do. I'm gonna put that same script in here. I'm gonna see what it does. Something I've learned recently is using multiple GPTs or uh, AIs that allow you to maybe have one create the content, then have another one review the content, provide suggestions, feedback, add your own suggestions and feedback, take that back to that GPT to recreate or BART or whichever kind of AI you're using. So there we go. This one seems very similar to this one. It always intrigues me that this is kind of like the output can be slightly different, but somewhere between these two is everything you need now to create a script in that tone and manner. So let's see. I'm going to add the wags dot one. Here is a recent video script of Patrick Wagner. Please apply the tone and manner above this script. Sorry, I can't see the typing on my screen all the way because I've got two monitors in front of me here. So this is where you would actually input. I only have one, but I do the same thing, probably five, 10 of my own scripts. That's why one of my big pieces of advice for folks in general is start collecting a repository of all your content, all your videos, all your written content. I know some people have blogs. I know we all use multiple platforms, but to really take advantage of AI in the future, I'm going to need you to make sure you start putting a repository together. So like whether that's a Dropbox, a Google Drive, something like that, where in that folder is your final blog posts, a lot of your you know, deeper writing, conversational stuff, even some of your text message chains in let's say your professional format or on your personal side, more professional, to be honest with you, and your email replies from those types of things, all your videos, your video scripts, uh, your feedback and changes and ideas. It's very powerful to have that type of a knowledge-based database set up because as the AIs get better and better, you're gonna wanna take advantage of them. And without that content repository, you won't be able to. You'll do what most people do. They'll come to GPT and be like, uh, make me video script. And then go like, oh, that's too generic. Write me social media post. Again, way too generic and gives fluffy and a version that people look at going, that's not me. Of course it's not. You didn't tell it who you are. You're better off starting with an interview process in GPT and actually having it understand who you are more, get your tone and manner, and then start writing under that tone and manner. So it took the script that we uploaded and it revised it. I'm actually gonna read it out for you guys now. So, hey everyone, Wags here. Today I'm gonna to share some groundbreaking insights from my new, from my recent journey in daily content creation. If you're juggling social media and real life, you're going to wanna to hear this. The game changer, stellar process and a robust content strategy. Imagine knowing exactly what to say, who to speak to, how they will react, all before hitting the record button. With these process, content creation becomes a breeze. Now, when I connect with you, I focus on delivering one crystal clear point before I was drowning in information overload. Remember, your content is a dialogue. Em embrace feedback, no matter how tough it seems. Honestly, I believe video content is the ultimate tool for personal development. So let's dive in together. I'm going to I'm going to be an epic, it's going to be an epic journey in 2020. 
see, that's the wrong year, in 2024, stay tuned to more insights that will transform your content game. So overall, this is actually my very first read. As you can see, every time you do content, I always find you have to read it a few times. Make sure any of the words that don't work or that you wouldn't use get replaced or changed or the errors that can happen like that. That could have been in the transcription or it could have been in an error from GPT. So reading it out, but this is kind of the power of this type of a GPT. Like I said, what I would further recommend is then taking all of this information and you can go further, download your content from Twitter, add that into here as well. And now you're going to get a tone and manner for how your social media posts should be as well. But today's uh, video is all about this awesome way of building great video scripts. So that's the tool for today. I hope this helps you guys. I hope this is something that you can see a use for, especially I think the best tool is going out there, looking at videos you really like, looking at videos that make you watch and stay around. That's the kind of content that most likely your audience will enjoy as well. And at most you should be doing that to kind of test and see maybe that is a format that works really well. Maybe focusing on one single point at a time, maybe having a clearer hook really makes the big difference for you. So I think this is a great way of pulling competitor information, looking at those videos, better understanding their style, what they're doing, and then making either adaptations or like I said, I'll take that style and I'll ask it to rewrite certain content and then see it. And then I'll go forward from here. And so I'll actually put together either a script idea or an outline for a script. And then I'll feed it in here and ask it to keep it in this competitor style, name that style, and then go forward or copy and paste the prompt. And then you'll have that. So you can go into GPT anytime and say, Hey, let's get started with some video scripts. Here's the tone and manner and style I'd like to keep. Here's my idea. That way, if you're taking voice memos or sending yourself those types of things, that's what I do as well. Send myself a voice memo for an idea, take that, put it into Otter, transcribe it, and then drop it into my GPT. Now with this custom GPT, I can just drop it in here. And so you can make custom GPTs for certain styles. And that's probably the best way to do it. Um, I haven't tested anything now with the ability to do, let's say two, three, four, five different, very specific styles. But I think once you create something like this for whoever it is that you're trying to emulate or a style you're trying to learn more about, it could easily probably do a few different styles and ask it to give me a Gary version, sorry, a Gary V version of this, or give me a, I don't know, Matt Gray version of this. You know, all of these options are available. GPT has a huge knowledge of all different authors, all different people, all different content creators too. So give me this in a Mr. Beast style. I might as well just do that because it knows how to do this. Give me this script in a Mr. Beast style, please. Now I make a lot of spelling errors and mistakes with GPT. It's very forgiving, whereas Bard is not. Bart is not forgiving at all. You got to write exactly what you want. If it goes over the line, you're not going to get something you want. It'll just tell you, Hey, I'm just a natural language program. I can't do that. Not overly helpful. So here you go. This is again, not something probably my style, but I think it's important to see how, let's say a successful style with your content might sound. So like Mr. Beast knows how to gain attention and grab people. So, hey everyone, it's Wags. Buckle up because today I'm revealing the ultimate game changer in content creation. That's absolutely blew my mind. If you're a social media warrior, this is for you. Get this. I discovered a secret formula that turns your content from hmm to wow. We're talking crystal clear messages targeted to your audience and guaranteed to get reactions. This isn't just a strategy, it's a revolution in content creation. Now you can hear the excitement in that and how different that is than what I read before, and especially, you know, the script that I put in as well. So I hope this helps. This is something that's made a big difference in trying different styles, in building my own style and understanding how to communicate better through short form content and this long form content as well. This is a great way of leveraging custom GPTs to build your video scripts, to adapt your style, to improve your style, to actually try some things outside of your comfort zone, 
to better develop your content so that it hits the mark, uh, which is your audience and makes them happy and reacts and gets them to kind of engage with your content as long as possible. Hope that helped guys. If you have any questions, comment down below, check me out on all the usual social media platforms. My long form content is on TikTok and YouTube and some of the regular shorter form content, Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter and uh, LinkedIn as well. Thanks very much, everyone. Have an awesome day.